Catholic Church commissions a report on the causes of the priest molestation epidemic. The study conducted by John Jay University was released the other day, and the results have been announced. Finally now, the Catholic Church can focus their attention on the causes of the problem and address them directly. So what was the root cause of the systematic rape of children by cloistered men who had chosen a celibate life in exchange for the protection of the Church and the unquestioning respect of their faithful flocks? Was it, as some speculated, the appeal that such an institution would have for men who struggled with otherwise socially unacceptable sexual appetites, such as homosexuality and or a propensity for prepubescent boys or girls? Or was it, as others supposed, the unavoidable result of the kind of unwarranted authority, respect, and trust society invests in those wearing vestments? Perhaps it was caused, as still others surmised, on the desperate need of the declining clergy to shore up its numbers, leading to a willingness to look the other way, thus exacerbating what might have otherwise been isolated aberrations, rather than the systemic recidivism it became. So which of these probable causes would receive the lion's share of the blame? Did the church fault its appeal to those who sought out a place to hide their self-hatred and shame for their sexual tastes from society in a fruitless attempt to suppress their perversions rather than seek help for them? Did the church instead recognize the abuse of its authority by laymen who assumed their religious leaders had a better moral character than they had any reason to presume had led to an underground culture of exploitation and depravity? Did the church fault its own inability to cope with its waning significance by sheltering its riffraff rather than exposing them to the civil authorities as they should have? Surprisingly, or perhaps not, the answer is none of the above. No, instead the church found what they apparently considered to be an acceptable scapegoat. The Roman Catholic Church and the Holy See chose to point their fickle finger of blame at a cultural movement by non-Catholics, the sexual revolution of the late 60s and early 70s. Rather than look within to determine why adult men give an inordinate power over children in a culture that shames the idea of sexual discovery, yet willingly embraces any male who makes a hollow promise to keep it in his pants, would find that lifestyle so unbearable that they ultimately succumb to the depravity that God hasn't scrubbed them of, despite their years of sexless prayers. Rather than confront that, they paid a company to scapegoat people who did confront their human needs and explored their animal nature in an open and honest and mutually respectful manner. The Catholic Church chose slut-shaming to project their sins upon the nearly forgotten memories of Helen Reddy and Haight Ashbury, to shout j'accuse at the Woodstock generation, and to hope that the rest of us would be just stupid enough to buy it. The problems for this theory are legion, but allow me to name just this one. The rumors of priests' sexual molestation of altar boys being endemic within the RCC go back much further than the summer of love. Many of the people who were rebelling in that era, the flower children and the hippies and the women's libbers and their ilk, were noting the chauvinism and misogyny and repressiveness of the church as being a cause of their rebellion at the time. Free love didn't cause the clergy to become molesting monsters. The molesting monsters and the clergy caused the revolution that was called free love. This report is simply more insult to the injury because, in effect, the report blames the victim.